I don't know whose idea it was to end The Good Place and BoJack Horseman in the exact same week, but they clearly hate emotions because <laughs> they tried to murder mine. Uh, hey, everyone, it's me, Aaron. I'm Michelle. And this and, is Peach. And that's Peach. She would not <laughs> let us record unless she was up here with us. Our own little Jason Mendoza. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so this is our post geek out reaction for The Good Place. It has completely wrapped up, and we are both huge fans of The Good Place. I've said this numerous times, but I think it's honestly the smartest television show maybe ever. <laughs> it's definitely the smartest one that's on TV at the moment, or I guess not at the moment anymore. That's a sad thing to think about. But yeah, it's definitely the smartest one within the past couple of years, but I'm, I'm seriously like going through my mental Rolodex of television history I honestly don't know if there ever has been a smarter show than this. Uh, and a lot of times whenever you say this is the smartest show that's ever existed, it sounds like you're putting down all other television. <laughs> no, no, no! I am aware of how smart all other TV shows have been. I am aware of some of the genius programs that have existed before. The Good Place is just that good. Uh, in fact, <laughs> we enjoy this thing so much that I'm not kidding you. We were actually going to do an entire build-up to the finale of The Good Place. Yeah, like we would do we like a season by season and we yeah. had post geek out reaction for each of them. And then one day my computer was getting like overloaded. Like it was just filled with too much stuff. I was like, all right, I gotta clear out some space. Here, all these old videos I don't use anymore. Delete all those, done. And like it just hit me like, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh God. Like we had recorded like three episodes, each almost an hour long, like breaking down every single season because I had seen all the shows. She had not. No, she was watching this for yet. the first time. Yeah. So we were getting two different perspectives on. One person seeing it the second time around, one person seeing it for the first time, and you know, me seeing it knowing where everything was going, her seeing it not knowing where everything was going. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. That's cool. And for anybody who's a fan of The Good Place, you'll love this stuff. I just deleted all of it by accident. It was all gone. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry, everybody. My bad. <laughs> So instead, we're going to just kind of talk about the entire series as a whole, but mostly the finale yeah. that aired at the end of last week. Uh, but also considering that I didn't know that the finale was going to be like two parts aired at the exact same time as an hour-long special, I thought we had another week on this thing. I mean, if we did do the week of build-up to the end of The Good Place, it would have all been going up during my best of the year countdown stuff. <laughs> And I was already dying from that. I can barely talk right now from how much I had to talk during that. So maybe it's a blessing that we didn't do the week of build up to that thing. Uh, so anywho, uh, Peach, you're so distracting. <laughs> but maybe you're good for views. Um, everybody loves me. Uh, so yeah, so for anybody who doesn't know what The Good Place is, Go and get Hulu and watch all of The Good Place. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, get Netflix. Hulu only has like the last like three or four episodes on there. Netflix has all the seasons on there. The Good Place is a show about uh, someone who dies. And they wake up and they reveal that there is an afterlife. Mm -hmm. But there isn't really a heaven. There isn't really a hell. There's just a good place and a bad place. And when you die... All your points get tallied out. Like, every time that you do a good thing, you get good points. Every time that you do a bad thing, you get bad points. And in the end, all your points are tallied up. And whoever is at the highest. Like, you don't just have to have positive scores. You have to have the tip-top, like, amazing positive scores. Like, top of the class. Exactly. Those are the only people who are allowed into this, into the good place. Uh, and there's a moment at the beginning of this in which... Like, she asked uh, the architect of The Good Place, the guy who designed this Good Place neighborhood, because there's many different neighborhoods for many different people in The Good Place, but everyone is designed by an architect. The architect is played by Ted Danson, by the way. Uh, she asked him, okay, so who got it right? He goes, well, Christians got about 10% right. Hindus got about 10% right. Jews got about 10% right. Everybody got about 10% right. Except for Doug Forsett. And in his office, there's just this photo of this stoner-looking guy just, yeah. Like that. <laughs> and he goes, who's Doug Forsett? Oh, back in the late 70s, there was this guy, Doug Forsett, who in his college dorm took a bunch of mushrooms, and his friends asked him, what do you think happens when he dies? And he just went on this long tangent, and he got about 87% correct. We were all standing around watching this. <laughs> we just couldn't believe it was happening right now. That's one of my favorite moments of the entire show. It's in the first episode. Uh, but yeah, when I saw all the commercials for this, I had no idea what this show was. I thought it was about like some people who just live in a super nice, friendly neighborhood because everything looks peaceful and yeah, nice. Yeah, it's in there. like 
it's like almost like uh like uh, the housewives of like uh, the what um shoot what the uh, uh not the real housewives but the uh, uh oh god the um that soap opera thing yeah yeah like, yeah the uh, uh god that oh is my god name. that's gonna <laughs> but that show that I got addicted to back in the two thousands yeah yes yes I thought it was like that where like everything was like programmed to be perfect and then these people like move in or something it's like and like start screwing things up yeah which kind of is what it is about <laughs> kind of. Except that everybody's dead and this is the afterlife. Yeah. Because here is the big reveal. They come in here and they say, okay, well, not only is there a good place, but there's also such a thing as soulmates. There is that one special person for everyone out there. And we have done the math to find you, your exact soulmate. Here he is, and they introduce uh, our protagonist, Eleanor, and they introduce her to her soulmate, G.D. Anagonier, who is this uh, philosophy professor. Uh, and he comes in there and he goes, great, this is wonderful. We're going to be soulmates. I've never had a soulmate before. This is going to be amazing. He goes, okay, so I can trust you with anything. Yeah, absolutely. That's what soulmates are for. Cool. Every single thing he said about what I accomplished to get me to the good place is a lie. I didn't do any of that stuff. I don't know. Like, my name is Eleanor, but I don't know what any of this stuff is that he's talking about. Everything that he's referencing, I never actually did. I don't belong here. So the first season of this show becomes about Chidi having to help Eleanor become a better person mm -hmm. so that way if he if she gets found out maybe she can accrue good place points while already in the afterlife and okay that is the premise of this just tune out now if you haven't seen this I'm telling you this is an amazing show check it out on Netflix tune out now this show is worth watching okay but from there, it keeps going, and there's more reveals, and yeah. more reveals. Like, it's like every season, like, it has its own storyline. Every season has its own storyline, but then about halfway through every single season, they go, twist, and then what the season's actually like, about. I guess every season has two storylines. Every, se every, single <laughs> season, every single season has one storyline that takes a dramatic twist halfway through, and then the next season is a completely different storyline that will take a dramatic twist halfway through. Uh, yeah, it's amazing to me that they did that, and some of the point out is that this show only lasted for four seasons, but it didn't get canceled due to low ratings. Apparently the ratings were really good. I mean, when the last episode aired, they even did one of those talking dead things that I hate so much. <laughs> Except we actually watched this one, and I mean, it was nothing but people were going, so was it emotional? Yes, it was very emotional. I was like, oh, I bet it was emotional. Yeah, it's like, it's the same stupid thing that all these talking shows do, but like, I love the show so much, I wanted to see it. But yeah, they did cancel the show because of low range. The creators canceled it because they said, we had a purpose with this show. We had a thing we wanted to do with this show, and we had to ask ourselves, how much longer can we keep going with this show and still do the thing that we wanted to do with this show? And we realized this was it. There's no more stories to tell with these characters after this, so we're ending it. And what's amazing is that in the final like two episodes, we looked at that and went, that's an entire season! <laughs> like, you just came up with a brand new concept for what season number five could have been in the final episode, or in the last two episodes, and instead you just went, no, nope, we're done, we're done, we're resolving it all. Uh, I like the way it ended. I love the way that this ended. I love it, because, so, alright, for anybody who is still with us, you pro you know what the show is about, but for anybody who has decided to stick around, because you're like, it doesn't matter if you spoil anything for me, just go ahead and keep talking. Uh, I just have you all in the background so I can have background noise, that's it. <laughs> uh, understandable, I'm very good at that. Uh, but what the show is actually about is that they eventually find out that there is another person there who was this monk. And he was a monk who had taken a vow of silence. Eventually that monk reveals, yeah, my name is Jason Mendoza, I'm from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I don't know what's going on and I'm very scared right now. He was also there by accident. Yeah. Uh, and then... Eventually it keeps going on, there's another character in there, Tahani, who was this, uh, oh god, what do you call those people? Um, the, um, the, uh, not aristocrats, but the people who go to parties and fancy and all that stuff. Uh, god, I can't remember what it's called. We are blanking on all words. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she, uh, she was also there as a regular character, and at the end of it, it at the end of season one, Eleanor gets found out, and Jason gets found out. And they have to come up with something to do now. They have to realize, okay, well, T 
two of you have to go back to the bad place. You gotta go to the bad place. That's where you two are supposed to actually be. But then Tahani and Chidi are like, okay, well, what should we actually do with them? And then there actually was a good Eleanor who got sent to the bad place by mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a whole bunch of complicated things going on. And then as they're all arguing about what they should do, Eleanor goes, oh my god, this is torture. Wait. Hey, uh, we came up with our decision. Uh, I'm going to the bad place. So is Jason. So is Chidi. So is Tahani. We're all going to the bad place. What? Why are you going to the bad? Because this is the bad place. And then they just look at him and go, God damn it, you figured it out. <laughs> you figured, yeah, it turns out this entire good place neighborhood they were living in was actually the bad place. And they had purposely picked these people and put them in situations that would mentally torture them nonstop. Eleanor had to constantly pretend to be a good person when she was, as she described herself, a trash person. Uh, Chidi, someone who was constantly stressed and suffered from anxiety, now had to constantly live out what should be his big final reward in life, the good place, he had to spend all that time just going, oh God, Eleanor, please don't get caught, please don't get caught. Okay, well, I, I don't really like the kind of person that Eleanor is, but I have to constantly stick around her at all times, make sure that she doesn't screw anything up. She's stressed. Jason had to constantly pretend to be someone that he wasn't. Uh, Tahani had to constantly try and impress everyone because that's the kind of person that she is. So she was put in a situation where she had to feel like, okay, well, I'm in the good place, but I'm not the best good place person. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep trying to make myself even better to be the best of the best. Uh, yeah, it was genius. And I looked at them and went, what the hell are you going to do in season two? Season two... At the end of it, uh, the architect, which, oh god, what was the architect's Michael. name? Michael. Michael, thank you. Uh, Michael just goes, wait, hold on. This was the first attempt. He had to go back to his boss, uh, which is boss, oh god, I can't remember the boss's name either on this one. Uh, Sean. Uh, he had to go with his boss, Sean, who was one of my favorite characters in this entire series. He had to go, had to go with his boss, Sean, who was about to shut the entire thing down. He goes, listen, this is just the first attempt. Every first attempt fails. But you know, we got pretty far into this thing. Now we go back, we erase their memories and do the whole thing over again. At the end of season two, at the end of season one, they erase all their memories and then it starts off with them just back at the good place again. Just the exact same lie over again, except at the end, Eleanor hid like one clue for herself and now they're going to try and keep them separated because like, okay, we can't have them all meet up with each other because if they all meet up with each other, then they'll eventually be able to come to this realization again and all this will happen again, so I will have to separate them. At the end of season one, Eleanor leaves one little secret for herself that just is uh, a note just that says, find Cheaty. She's like, I don't even know what Cheaty is. And I remember looking at that and just going, oh my god, I'm, I feel crushed. Like, I felt hopeless at the end of season one because when I like these characters so much. I feel so good about what they've been doing and how far they've grown, how far they've come. And all that progress was gone. And now I know they're being tortured the entire time. Like, now I... Now I don't even look at it and go, well, at least Michael seems like a good guy and he'll be on this. No, Michael's a demon. Yes. <laughs> Michael wants to mess with these people. And man, I just, I had like that sinking feeling in my stomach going into season two. And I thought, I don't even know if I want to live through an entire other season of watching these characters just go through the same thing and be tortured. Halfway through that season, like, no, nah, that, that ain't what this is actually about. That ain't what this is actually about. Halfway through it, it's revealed that they have now figured out that this is the bad place. So they erase their memories again. And they realize this is the bad place. And they erase their like memories again. they just again. keep realizing what's over, going on over like and over. 800 times they live through this simulation. And every single time, and eventually Michael is just broken down. Yeah, and like the demons who will work for him are like tired of the all this. The demons are done with this shit. Yeah, it's like the thing is like, Michael designed this, uh, this the good place to psychologically torture these people. As me, as me, instead of like for like millions of years torturing them physically, which yeah. is what the regular other demons are. And the demons to. don't understand this. The other demons are like, I have been working in the penis flattening department <laughs> for two thousand years now, and we never had a complaint. And now you come along with your ideas about psychological torment. Like they don't want any part no. of this. They think this is a stupid idea. Um. So now the demons are rebelling against Michael, and Michael knows that if he gets found out that this is not his second attempt, but his 834th attempt, he knows 
that uh, he's gonna get like he's gonna get what they call retired, retired. <laughs> where all your atoms are picked apart, each one placed on a different sun, where they each scream for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he doesn't want that, obviously not. Um, <laughs> so what happens is that the humans, again for the 834th time, realize that this is the bad place, and Michael goes to them and goes, "Okay, yes, fine, but here's the deal." If we reboot this thing anymore, they're going to come to me, and I'm going to get retired, and I don't want that. So I need you to pretend like you don't know this is the bad place. And they think that the way, they like come to a compromise and say, okay, fine, we'll do that. You have to take the philosophy lessons with us. G's been teaching us all philosophy. He's been teaching us all how to be better people. You have to take those lessons with us now. So that becomes the second half of season two. The second half of season two is not them trying to figure out, oh, am I in the good place or the bad place or not. It, we know we're in the bad place, but we now have to pretend like we're in the good place while we try and make this demon a better person. And Michael becomes a better person. Like at the end of season two, Michael now actually likes the humans and he cares about the humans and he has to come in there and save the humans from the other demons. Like in the beginning, he was always sort of had some sort of interest in humans. Well, yes. human uh, human things like paper clips he and stuff. He was fascinated. Like, like he loves the idea of humans. He wants to be a human. Like that was one of the things that all throughout season, um, what's it called, all throughout uh, uh, season one, even though we now look back at that and go, okay, well, he was faking that. He was faking trying to be nice to them. His love of humans, he kept saying things like, I always wanted to know what it was like to be a human. I always wanted to tell someone, take it sleazy. Just like the smallest little things, the I always wanted to lose my set of car keys and then look around and go, where are my car keys? Like the tiniest little mundane things. He wanted that. He was so fascinated by that stuff. And now he loves the humans and... Season two ends with them actually having to go to the judge. Like, there is no God, but there is a judge who presides over the good place mm -hmm. and the bad place and all this stuff. And he has to present to them the idea that, okay, they did actually become better people in the afterlife. Like, we know the points stop once you hit this certain point. We know that your points stop as soon as you die. But if the points continued after they died, they would have continued to become better people. Please pick a lap, buddy. <laughs> Honestly, Peach. All right, buddy, you got to go down now. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, uh, they did continue to become better people. If they went back to the real world, I know they would be better people now. They just need that nudge in the right direction. So the judge agrees, and season three is them back in the real world now, no memories of the afterlife, and they become better people. Then they become worse people again. So Michael has to go back to Earth behind the judge's back and meddle with their lives to get them to come together to become better people again. And that's the theme of season three. Halfway through season three, they find out about Michael and Michael explains the afterlife to them. And now it's about them going, all right, well, screw it. We can't get into the good place now. We know we're going to the bad place because once you know about the good place, any points you get are tainted because you're only doing it to get into the good place. So they don't count. So they go, well, we're just now doomed to the bad place. But maybe we can try and make things better for other people. Maybe we can try and get off our friends and family into the good place. So it becomes about them going around trying to help everybody else in the world. To try and get those people to become better people. And that's the rest of season three. But season three then ends with them coming to the realization that... Uh, no matter what you do, no one gets in the good place. Mm -hmm. That is one of the biggest, craziest reveals of this entire thing. Uh, and we're going to go into like the whole philosophy side of this in a moment. Uh, but at the end of this, they uh, at the end of the at the end of season three, they are looking into why on earth has no one gotten into the good place in so many years. They find out that in like five hundred years, no one has gotten into the good place. And then they start looking it up and they look at everybody's scores and go, okay, so in 200 AD, this person got flowers for their mother, 200 points. 2018, another person got flowers for their mother, lost 14 points. And it's because this person, you know, this person bought 
the flowers online using a cell phone made in a factory that used uh, that was made in a sweatshop and the flowers were picked from a farm that used chemicals that hurt the environment and then the flowers were flown on a plane that had a huge carbon footprint and the money from the purchase of those flowers went to a CEO who used that money to cheat on his wife with his mistress. <laughs> And it's this big statement about how complicated life is that everything has unintended consequences now. And it's so crazy watching something like that because this is something that, I don't know, it's something that I think about all the time. I don't know how many other people think about this stuff, but yeah, it's one of those things where you try and make good choices, but you constantly have to think, yeah, but I'm still making a purchase from someone for this thing and that thing then goes towards a bad thing because the people who run this thing are and, bad. And like that was pretty much like Chidi's life. Yes. Like, that was the whole w the reason why he had trouble making decisions because he knew that there would also be bad consequences no matter that what. That was one of the running gags with Chidi is yeah. that he constantly kept thinking about the consequence of everything they did. Like there's a joke in which the first time that he finds out that he's actually in the bad place, he goes, "Well, I know why Eleanor's here. I know why Jason is here, but me, oh." The almond milk, right? I read an article about how almond milk was made on farms that use chemicals bad for the environment, and I, I still just, I kept on drinking almond milk, and I went, <laughs> no, you idiot, it's because you made life miserable for everyone around you because you couldn't make up your mind about anything because you were so indecisive. And then at the end of this, they're trying to explain to the judge why nobody can get into the good place and why that's a problem with everybody and why that's a problem with the system right now. Uh, and Chidi comes in there and he says, yeah, and you can sit here and think about the consequences of everything, but I did that and I still got into the bad place because of that! Uh, yeah, I think that it's so incredibly, I, don't, I always use this term, but screw it, I gotta do it. I think it's incredibly bold of this thing to come in here and go, everything sucks for everybody because of everything. <laughs> and there's nothing you can really do except just try and be good in whatever way you can. Honestly, at this point, I think most people realize that by yes, now. <laughs> it is, but the thing is, Everybody realizes it. It's just that thing that you don't say. Yeah. Like, you don't... Yeah, everybody... Everybody knows that the entire world is fucked to a point that there's no repairing it. But you don't say it! Uh... So, yeah, I love that they did that, and... Man, we're making this show sound like it's just really deep, and it is! But it's so hilarious yes. how deep it is. Like, the characters are great. The like, character, this, has, even... this is one of my favorite ensemble casts of anything I've ever seen in my life. Like, we didn't even talk about Janet. Oh my god, you're <laughs> right. And we literally, like I said, we record three episodes of this talking about each season. Every single time we talk about this, I said, how has the actress who has played Janet not been nominated for an Emmy? How? Like, the only people nominated for an Emmy in this show is uh, Ted Danson, which, yeah, I think that Michael... Listen, it's one, of these, it's one of those shows where it's really hard to point at anybody and go, they're the best character in the show, because everybody's kind of a contender for that. But man, I can make a strong argument for Michael. I'm not saying that he is, because Janet's also way up there. Cheaty's way up there. Eleanor's way up there. Uh, but Michael, man, watching his progression, watching everything that he does, and Ted Danson just going 100% on everything that he does in there. But yeah, the only people who have been nominated is Ted Danson, and Maya Rudolph got nominated for best uh, uh, guest appearance. Which and she was the judge, by the she's way. She's the judge, and man, does she deserve it. <laughs> there is one of the best lines in this entire show is she, uh, she looks at them and says, so what if life is complicated? You just figure it out. Listen, you don't want to buy tomatoes that give you a negative impact? Do more research on the tomatoes, that's all. And they go, all right, why don't you go down to Earth? Well, you test that. Well, you live down there for a while. And then she goes, fine, I'll go down, see what all the hubbub is about on Earth. She disappears, goes down to Earth, and they go, all right, well, how long is she going to be gone? Uh, I don't know, it could be days, weeks, months. And then she immediately reappears and goes, oh, oh, man, that was rough. And apparently I'm a black lady, and they do not like black ladies down on Earth. I look at that one, that is one of the best deliveries of any line in this entire show, a show that has nothing but great deliveries. Um, so yeah, uh, Janet is basically, uh, the, like... The God. Alexa? Thank you, I was trying to think of it. Uh, it's basically Alexa for the afterlife. Yes. It is this humanoid, not a human, not a person. Not a robot. Not a either, robot. Like, uh, this, uh, this, this being. Yes. <laughs> That's one of the best running gags in the show. Uh, it's this 
figure uh, <laughs> who is basically there to give you everything that you want. You just call on her and she appears and she just gives you whatever it is that you're looking for. And at first she is just this blank face, hi there, yes. Do you, what, do you like this thing? Would you like some more information on that? Okay, thank you, goodbye. And that's it, that's all her character is. But then there comes a moment where she knows some stuff so Eleanor decides to murder her, and they go, well, is there a way to kill you? Yeah, sure there is. There's a big reboot button, and they have to go, and they hit the reboot button, and it causes her to come back. But every time that a Janet is rebooted, they come back a little bit smarter and yes, a little bit better. Because they had experience from the previous session before exactly. they got rebooted. Which, again, you think about how many things come back around in this show, like how many themes are kept alive in this show. It's incredible. Um, We'll get in that in a moment, but as we said, Michael has had to reboot The Good Place 834 times at this point. So she has been rebooted more than any other gen. So she has learned emotions. Mm -hmm. She has learned how to care. She actually falls in love with Jason, uh, which I love that. The person that knows everything falls in love with the guy who is the dumbest character in this entire series. Uh, I love that, but you see them together and it fits. Mm -hmm. It really works. Um, so yeah, Janet is amazing, and the actress who plays her, holy crap, the links that she goes to in here. There's a moment in season three where she has to bring the four humans into her void, into the space inside of her where she is able to bring everything out that she asked for. And she brings them inside, and she goes, well, I don't know what's going to happen. And when they get inside, they're all now Janet. So there's an entire episode where that actress has to play every single one of the four characters, mm -hmm. and she does it. Uh, yeah, it's, that actress absolutely deserves way more respect. Um, uh, by the way, I have seen many people cosplaying Janet at con, <laughs> and we were at, uh, what was the con? Flame con? Yes. Yeah, we were at Flame con, and I saw someone walking around, and I just went, Janet! And then she just came over, and she, like, did a bit with me from the show, about where it was this episode where she was broken, so all that she could produce is cactuses, or cacti, I should say, and... She had cactus stickers that she was just handing out to everyone. It was the most wonderful thing. I still have that sticker, actually. Uh, I, put it on the, uh, I put it on an external hard drive, and I keep it around. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what then happens is we're going to now just stop summarizing the entire show for everyone. Because uh, at this point, you probably know what the show is. So the show, it ended with them, they fixed the good place. They yeah. come up with a way. Yeah, they, they fix the broken system. Yes, they fix the broken system. And the inspiration for that is that the judge was just going to reboot everything because yeah. she decided that yeah, everything Yeah, she was like, wow, well, everything sucks. I'm just going to reboot everything. Yeah, just want to reboot everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they had to go with a way to fix it. And Chidi had, had his mind wiped again, so they had to, like, bring all of his memories back. But they brought back all of his memories from his original life, from the first time in The Good Place, from the second time in The Good Place, from every single 800 and some odd times in The Good Place. It brought back... And now, all of a sudden, Chidi was fixed. <laughs> all of his problems. Were all his gone. anxieties are all, like gone. It's like he and, and he, he knows what to do. Yeah, he no longer has to make decisions about anything. He no longer has to second guess everything. There's that great line that I've seen become the biggest gif of 2020 of the "Shut up, shut up, I'm confident now." <laughs> uh, and you know something? I love that because you see a lot of times you'll have that character who's so nervous and down themselves and what gets them to snap out is that somebody just comes in and gives them a big speech and goes, you know what? You're right. It's like, that's not what gets rid of anxiety. No. But living out 834 different lifetimes, many of which probably took a thousand years because they were in the afterlife, and taking all that information and everything that you know and accruing it into one point and taking all that knowledge and experience... Yeah, okay, that'll do it. That'd probably get rid of most mental issues. Yeah, that'd probably do it. I can see how that would work. Uh, so the decision they come up with is that now the good place, there's no bad place, there's no good place. But everybody is now going to go into a fake good place where they have to learn lessons as they go along. And as they go along, they'll get to the end of their time in the good place. You'll see how, much, how improved they are. If they're improved enough to get into the actual good place, they go into the actual good place. If not... Reboot the system, but they maintain a little bit of their knowledge of how much they've grown from the previous time, and then they live out the good place again. Then they keep doing that over and over and over again. Like they they phrase this very they phrase this very well in the in the show. It's like they're saying your life 
is the class you take. Mm. Then when you go into the afterlife, it's the test. Yes. And then when you pass the test, you get into the good place. So it's like, that actually makes a lot of sense, yes. you know? <laughs> yes. And so basically, if you fail the test, they basically go, all right, like, study up and come back for the test again. Uh, so uh, they then allow the four humans to get into the actual good place. And they get in there. And we mentioned that they didn't want to keep the show going on and on and on because they didn't want to get stale. And they wanted every single episode to be a lesson about philosophy, which is amazing that I had watched three seasons of this thing before the creators of the show went on Twitter and said, listen, this is one of the purposes of the show. Is that every single episode we wanted to like, put out there some kind of a philosophical lesson. I had not realized every single episode was indeed teaching a lesson in there. Every episode was. Uh, that's genius. And they said, listen, we don't know how we can keep the show going into the season five and keep coming with lessons. The penultimate episode, the episode right before the end, is they get to the good place and they find uh, these people living there and the people living there just go, okay, you have to help us because we're all getting dumber and we're all bored out of our minds and we're going insane here because we have now been living lives where we get everything we want without having to work for it at all, at all times. And we've been having that for hundreds and hundreds of years now. We don't have any motivation to get better. We don't work to become better. We don't do anything at all. We're going insane. Like, he's talking to one of his philosophical heroes, and she's an idiot now. Mm -hmm. Because she hasn't had to do anything in a thousand years. She wants a milkshake, she just has a milkshake. And now she just gets another one, another one, another one. And I remember looking at that going, that's an entire season. <laughs> they could have done this for an entire season, but they come up with a solution to it. And the solution is that... Okay, well, the reason why life feels like you have to work for stuff, the reason why life feels like uh, it has a purpose is because it ends. The good place doesn't end. So we're going to create a set of doors, and when you walk through there, we don't know what happens. You're scattered out into the universe, and you rejoin all of existence, but we don't exactly know, like, are you still conscious? We don't, we don't know anything. Janet knows everything, and even she doesn't know what happens to you when you go through these doors. But that is the end of your time in the good place. And everybody loves it because now, oh my God, I can actually like think again because I know that I won't get this milkshake forever and ever and ever. So it has importance again. And stuff matters to me again. And the final episode is just our four humans going through the door. Like it's an hour long special about each of them coming to the realization of, I've been in the good place long enough. It's time for me to go through the door. And we don't know what will happen there. And that is one of the most touching final episodes of anything I have ever seen. I was crying my eyes out at one point. Like, when it got to the point where Chidi went through the door, man, just tears all down my yeah, face. Yeah, like, I thought, like, Chidi and uh, Eleanor were going to go through together. Me too! <laughs> but I love that they didn't. Yeah. Because... That would have been such a, like, fairy tale ending. Mm -hmm. And I love that this show was all about, man, humans are different, and we all have our own individual problems. I mean, problems. like, the fact that, like, all four of them went into the good place together, yeah. I think that felt like that was enough. Yeah. They, did, they didn't need to, like, go into, like, the final door to, Chidi to prove and, that. Chidi and Eleanor got to spend a thousand years together mm -hmm. in the good place, which, that's the thing, it keeps coming in here and going 834 Baramis later, which, that's the other thing for anybody who has no idea what that means. In the afterlife, time moves differently. Time doesn't go in a straight line. It loops back around in and of itself, and they call it Jeremy Bear Me. That is what time is called in the afterlife because if you look at the path that time flows in the afterlife, it spells out in cursive the English word, the English name Jeremy Bear Me. And then there was, like, this joke about the, the dots. dots. Which I kept thinking that that was going to come back around. It never comes back around, but I'm fine with it not coming back around. But the, that's one of my favorite moments from Chidi ever. So, what's the dot? Oh, the dot? That's nothing. But it's also next Tuesday. Also 1917. Also the time outside of Florida. Like, it's all this stuff. Like, it's like four different crazy things all lined together. And then she just goes, this broke me. <laughs> this, the, the dot. The dot. That, I'm, I'm out. I'm good. That was one of my favorite episodes, too, because that was the episode where they all find out about the afterlife while they're still humans. And every single one of them embraces it in a different way. And again, it makes me think about how this show, the purpose of the show, was to explain philosophy to people. And that entire episode, at the end of it, Chidi literally gives a lecture to his class, and he says, 
Okay, there's three different ways to deal with tragedy. This way, this way, and this way. And it's what Eleanor, Tahani, and Jason did. But then the Indian comes in and goes, but you know what the real way to deal with tragedy is? That's all a bunch of dookie. You know the real way? Nihilism. <laughs> Nothing matters. And the entire episode was Cheaty losing his mind and not caring about anything. So that's what he was doing. And again, it makes me look back and go, you literally gave us a philosophy class. That's what, the, that's what this entire episode was. It was literally Cheaty in a philosophy class. Uh, and it's amazing me that I didn't get that's what the show was trying to do with every episode. Um, but, uh, yeah, at the end of this, uh, each of them just go through it. And I think that each, well, not each of them, Tahani never went through. Because no. Tahani went on to do something else. She became an architect. She became an architect. Yes. Uh, and... Which I love that the architects are now the demons, but the demons are now okay with this. Even Sean, and I love that at the end, Sean comes in and goes, Okay, so when do you think that she'll uh, be able to become an architect? Oh, I'm sure she'll be, I'm sure she'll be certified real soon. Did that sound threatening? Damn it, I'm trying not to do that. Uh, <laughs> I love that even Sean was now trying to become a better person. Uh, and this is one of those shows where you look at it and it's like, man, everybody, in that final episode, everybody comes back around. All their friends from Earth, you see them in the afterlife. Uh, you see them talking about their time spent with their family members, like them clearing stuff up with mm -hmm. the members of their families. Like Jahani always had problems with her sister and with her parents. And when they all get into the good place, you see them uh, like actually having good times together and actually being together with each mm -hmm. other. And yeah, it feels like every single thing was tied up in there. Uh, and again, I love that Chidi and Eleanor uh, didn't go through together because they even had that be a lesson. Mm -hmm. Like Eleanor was talking about how it would not be right for me to keep you here when you're miserable. Yeah, and like at the same time, it's like at the beginning of the show, they weren't really together either. No. Like they were not even meant to be together. It no. was just coincidence. Well, not coincidence. But they like were purposely picked to torture each yeah, other. Yeah, but like not meant to be soulmates, but yeah. they did become soulmates. They became soulmates. Uh, which, by the way, at the end of this, uh, Chidi's last gift to her was a fireman calendar of him. <laughs> If The Good Place doesn't actually sell that as a calendar, I will be amazed. Like, you wouldn't make money with that. Um, Although I'm wondering, like, how, like, Jeremy Barramy calendars are... Oh, that'd be cool. Com that, compared like, to, like, Earth Year yeah, calendars. Yeah, what are the months? What are the months in Jeremy Barramy? <laughs> are there any each, months? Is each letter a different month? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh... Hmm. So, at the end of this, yeah, it's each of them going through, and, like, like I said, each of them feels like they get the right final thing to happen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I love that Jason, Jason made a gift for uh, Janet, but he loses it and she's like, that's fine, I don't need someone to remember you by, I experience time at all times. And so, she then leaves him there to walk through the gate. And then like a thousand years later, after Chidi goes through, he reappears and he goes, hi, I knew I lost it somewhere, so I kept searching around the forest, but then I remembered I put it in my other pocket. So I waited a thousand years for you to come back. Other Jans came back, but I knew it wasn't you. So I waited specifically for you to come back. He goes, what did you do for thousands of years? And I went, well, I just kind of walked around, just thought about my own place in the universe, and just spent a lot of time in silence, just complaining. And she goes, like a monk. And which, that's what my thought was. <laughs> so I'm glad they actually said it. Uh, and I just looked at him like, this show started off with him pretending to be a monk, and in the end, he probably goes on the most peaceful journey that any monk could ever attain. <laughs> it's amazing that they did that. But the best to me is what happens to Michael. Yes. Michael gets his wish. Because Michael's losing his mind because everything works so perfectly now, there's nothing to do anymore. Yeah. Like, he, he, the thing that was happening to the humans in the good place is happening to him because he built the best good place. It's done. No one needs to make him to make a new good place. And, like, all his human friends are, like, moving are on. Leaving. Or, like, leaving. And it's like, he tries going through the door several times, but it doesn't work because he isn't human. Yes. So they go and they make him a human. They get the judge to make him a human. And he goes down to Earth. And he gets to do just all the mundane stuff they always want. And the final thing that happens in the show, I'm starting to tear up thinking about this right now. The final thing that happens in the show, after we see Eleanor, the last of the humans, walk through the gate, and we see her, like, disappear into the universe, it then, like, cuts back to Earth, and someone is going to their mailbox, and I was like, is this going to be, like, the thing after the good place? Like, is this, because they said, we don't know what happens, and is it going to be like, okay, you're just now all back on Earth? Is this some new reality that you're in? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Uh, what is this? What's going to happen? But then the guy just gets a letter. He looks at it. He then goes and he hands the letter 
uh, over to Michael. And he says, yeah, here you go. He goes, take it easy. I'll do you one better. Take it sleazy. And it's just, Michael got to say the thing. He always, Michael gets to be the most human human that ever existed. <laughs> but it's like, the thing is, like, when Eleanor went to the, the gate, like, she became, like, Stardust. Stardust, almost. basically, yeah. yeah she rejoined like, the universe. Yes, yeah. but it's like, she, like, like, the guy who was going through his mail and everything, like, I don't know what, if, if you saw, like, the dust particle go into him. I did not. Yeah, that was... I missed that completely. Yes, and that's when I realized Eleanor became that little voice in the back of your head. Oh, my God! Because that's he, so good! Because he was throwing through his mail, he was throwing out the mail that no wasn't link. his, but then she, then she, like, popped into his head, and he was like... Maybe I should return. Maybe I should give this mail to the rightful person. Because that's something that, like, throughout the entire series, uh, like, in season two, when Michael was asking Eleanor, listen, you're kind of like me. You're a shitty person, too. Why do you want to do all this stuff? And he goes, well, there's, uh, like, I've done a lot of terrible things. But there's always been that voice in the back of my head. And doing the good things, it's not fun. It feels terrible. But it does kind of silence that little voice in the back of your head. Oh my god, I didn't notice that. That's genius. That is so... This sh I thought this ending was as good as it could get. And it just got better. This show's genius, everybody. This show's so flippin' good. Oh, man. I'm, like, tearing up again thinking about how good this was. Like, not even for sad reasons. Although, it is plain sad. Like, the goodbye between Chidi... It's bittersweet. Chidi, the goodbye between Chidi and Eleanor is so heartbreaking because there's that moment where we know her past at this point. We've seen it a thousand times now. Uh, we know that, yeah, she actually had, like, her parents sign legal documents so that she could move out when she was 15 because her parents were so crappy, so she had to be on her own that entire time, like, for the rest of her life, and even before she moved out, she was kind of on her own, she had to take care of herself. There was a moment when she's talking about, I don't want to be on my own anymore, and she knows that if Chidi leaves, now she is on her own again, in the afterlife forever or until she decides to stop and she's not ready to go yet and man that was so heartbreaking but uh, yeah i love that this show it i love this show didn't have them go through the gate together i keep thinking about that because yeah everybody's different and you can't like a large part of philosophy revolves around the idea that you don't always get the big happy ending you don't always get that Life doesn't work out the way you want. That's the entire reason why we have philosophy. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, man. Oh, this... we didn't even talk about the middle place. Oh, yeah, the middle place? <laughs> man, that was great how that came back around. Because, like, you mentioned, like, how Eleanor, like, spent her whole life by herself because she didn't want to rely on anyone. It's like, oh, you know another character like <laughs> and that? And at the very end, which, <laughs> the crazy thing is, we were watching this final episode, and I literally, like, turned to you and went, you know, it's really weird that they haven't brought back. And then they cut to Mindy St. Clair. <laughs> this went, oh, never mind, fuck it. Like, literally, it was as I was saying. It's really weird that Mindy St. Clair, whoa. Um, yeah, because Mindy St. Clair was this person who did terrible things, but then as she was about to die, she wrote up this plan for a charity that would save the world, and then she died before it was able to be implemented, but then got implemented after her, so the good place and the bad place are like, all right, what do we do with her? Fine, we'll create a middle place right in between. And the running gags about the middle place, about how everything she has to drink is the most, meh, fine drink. Everything she has to watch is the most, meh, fine yeah. drink. I kept expecting that to turn out to also be the bad place because I kept looking at that and just thinking to myself, after a hundred years, this would be the most torture that you could, like, if the only thing you have to watch is Cannonball Run 2, <laughs> The most okay, f which I love the idea that they had to sit around in the writer's room pitching out what the most okay middle-of-the-road film of all time is. Like, I just want to know what the other things were for that list. Um, yeah, just sitting there and thinking about uh, Minnie St. Clair and everything that she had been through, um, I kept thinking this has to be a bad place, too. No, it wasn't. Uh, but at the end of this, yeah, I hadn't even really put it together. But she goes there and goes... You're what I would have become if I hadn't had my friends. Someone who just looks out solely for themselves. And the last thing Eleanor does is she convinces Minnie St. Clair to go through the test. Uh, which, gotta say, what happened to Derek at the end is one of the craziest <laughs> comments. Wow. Because <laughs> um, I remember when season four of this uh, started up, Derek, the child boyfriend of Janet, the humanoid creature like Janet that uh, like, Janet, Janet, Janet created a boyfriend yeah. to get over Jason at one point when they broke up. 
Um, and that was Derek, and Derek was this individual who like just didn't know what existence was. It was just, hi, I'm Derek, just wandering around. Like he was stuff. like, tr he was like basically like a knockoff Janet. He was like, like yeah, when you go to like the dollar store and find like the crappy action figures <laughs> that aren't the actual like mainline action figures. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those of Janet. Um, so, but he ends up getting rebooted over and over and over again, and Mindy, jo and like, they don't know what to do with him, so they drop him off with Mindy St. Clair, and Mindy is just like, oh, fine, come on in. But she eventually gets tired of him, so she reboots him whenever she needs some quiet time. Yeah. And she reboots him over 4,000 times, and he becomes a floating, like, he becomes a galactic brain. Mm -hmm. That's what he is. He is just floating cosmos. And I remember at the beginning of season four, I kept looking at him just going, oh, you're going to be the villain. And now he's not the villain, he's not the hero, he is nothing. He is just... He is nothing and everything. Nothing and everything <laughs> all at once. Uh, yeah, it is so wild how many things got wrapped up here. Like, the fact that Doug Forsett got into the good place, and I love it, it wasn't even old man Doug Forsett. It was the guy who just posted that one photo that had been used over and over again. They, they got that guy to come back, mm -hmm. uh, which he's probably like one of the writers or something. He's probably worked on the show before. Um, but they got him to come back for the final episode. They got all of their friends from Earth to come back for the final episode. This is one of the best final wrap-ups of any series I've ever seen, and it's one of the smartest shows I've ever seen. And I love this goddamn show. I love it so much, and it's one of those things that you have to sit there and go, there's never going to be anything quite like The Good Place, but we're all lucky that it existed. It is crazy that this show did not, like, get canceled immediately. It's crazy that, you know, in a day and age where some of the smartest shows on television, just people, uh, people don't care about them at all, partly because they're so smart, I guess. Like, Well, like, here's the thing, like, The Good Place is such a unique concept. That is like, you're intrigued about where it goes, so... Thank you for pointing out, because that's exactly what I was trying to say. The Good Place, it feels like this should have been canceled long ago, because it's so unique that you know the moment you pitched this to the producers, they were gone, who's the target audience for this thing? <laughs> I'm, I don't know if this appeals to the demographics that we're going for. And then, Yeah, you listen to the pitch of this show, and it's going to be a weekly philosophy lesson about people who are dead and in the afterlife, you listen to that and go, no way in hell is anyone <laughs> going to let this, no one is going to approve this. And they did, and it lasted for as many seasons as it wanted to last it for. That's incredible to me. Uh, yeah, I love this show. Uh, I mean, I just keep saying that forever and ever and ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is one of the most impressive shows I've ever seen. Thank you, Car Outside. <laughs> uh, I've noticed when I go back and edit these, most people don't hear the cars that honk outside during this. So that's just become my catchphrase. That means nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Car Outside. Uh, any final things to say about this? Like, I don't want to stop talking about the show, but we have to eventually stop talking about the show. Uh, any final thing you want to say? Uh, well... I don't know, it's like, here's the thing, it's like, in my life, like, I was, like, raised Catholic on my mom's side, and I... Oh, this is a good thing, point yes. to bring up, yes. I was raised Catholic on my mom's side, my dad wasn't very religious. I've also had, like, a lot of, um, experience with, like, losing family members and mm. everything, so mortality and morality were both ver things that were always in the back of my mind, and this, this show, like, brings them both up in a very... In a very interesting way. Yes. And a good way. Yes. Yeah, it's Absolutely. like... Absolutely. Like, this is a show about being better people. And in the end, yeah, in the end, this... I mean, not in the end. In the beginning, this show comes <laughs> in and goes, yeah, every religious belief you have is wrong. Uh, but the entire show is about, yeah, but yeah, as long as your religion is about morality. As yeah, as long as, as, long as doing, you're... Uh, as long as you're about being a better person and helping other people out. Yeah, then... And doing it because you want to help other people and, like, you don't really care about the reward or anything. Then that's the important stuff about yeah. any religion out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, which I find that interesting because uh, I wasn't really raised one religion or another. I've, I've always said if I have, like, a specific faith, it's sort of like pantheic, which is the belief that at the end when you die, you all go back and rejoin the universe, which is literally what happens <laughs> at the end of the show. So we both kind of got everything in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's like, I do, it's like, you never really know what comes, what, like, what happens to you at the, after you die and everything, but it was definitely, like, always something, like, I've been thought about, like, because oh, of... you can't not think about it if you're a human being. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's like, I like the idea that, like, we still, like, live on in the afterlife. Yeah. 
but like not living living like you know how Eleanor it's something yeah yeah like how Eleanor like became like stardust at the end I feel like our our souls live on yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah I think that that is something that uh, yeah I think that, that is a very positive message at the end of all of this that yeah we don't know what happens we don't know if you go and just join the big black void there at the end but which we're also going to do a BoJack Horseman <laughs> Uh, not to spoil anything about that show, um, but yeah, I think that it is pretty important that at the end of this they go like, you know what, it's everybody still kind of gets like, there's still good out there in the universe even when you're going out there and becoming a part of it. Like, just you being a part of the universe makes yes. it a better place, as long as you are a good person. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I'm sorry, it's just one of those things where it's like, I know there's more to say about this show because <laughs> it's so freaking smart, but... We have to wrap it up. We have to move on. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the good place down below. If you haven't watched this show, why did you sit through all this? <laughs> but I'm telling you, Netflix, it's on there. Watch it. It's so damn good. So smart. So funny. The cast is amazing. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody. Come on next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>